As a homicide detective, one of the hardest things to do on the job is to make the notification to the next of kin that their loved one has been murdered. And just imagine making that notification and then there's other things that come into play, like danger. I'm in one case, me and my partner, we um, were on a scene of a shooting. A young kid, 17, 18 years old, shot multiple times. I mean, we canvassed the area, no witnesses. I mean, we did everything on the crime scene. We had absolutely nothing. So now with that, we have to go to the next of kin to let them know that their young loved one has been murdered. And a great deal of times when you go to the family houses, we don't let them know right away we're from homicide. But, you know, just imagine two detectives come knocking on your door wearing suits. And, you know, they're telling you they're from the police department. I'm quite sure a lot of things are going through your mind. So um, we went to the address, mother came to the door, answered, introduced myself, introduced my partner, Detective Owens, asked me to come in to talk with you. She was hesitant, like, what is it I can help you with? Um, I just, you know, I didn't want to say we're for homicide. I said, man, can we please have a word with you? Um, of course, we showed identification and everything. She let us in, um, like a you know, small two or three bedroom apartment, nothing, you know, nothing big. But when, you, when you're inside of the places, whether it's an apartment, whether it's a home, you want to make sure, you know, you know who's there. You're not going to do anything unconstitutional by searching her apartment, walking around without permission. So I asked her, um, is, is anyone home with you? And the reason we ask that is because we're about to lay down some bad news. We, some, you know, we want to make sure someone is there with them. And if no one is there, then we know what, you know, to expect. The mother told me the other son was in the other room sleeping. She mentioned that he was older and, you know, she called out to him and he didn't answer. And she did it again. He did not answer. I said, you sure he's here, ma'am? She said, you can go check. So I just walked down the hallway of the apartment and uh, opened the door and just peeped in. He was lying there asleep. I come back in and she like, now what's wrong? I mean, she had a little attitude with her, but I can clearly understand with the police were in her place. So I said, ma'am, uh, we're from homicide. Then when I told her we're from homicide, her expression just like totally changed. Okay, and then before I go forward, I just want you just to visualize the, the surroundings. I'm standing here where I am right now. Straight ahead in front of me is a hallway, which led to three bedrooms, okay? To my right, there's uh, like the furniture, I'm in the living room, living room, dining room part. I'm in the dining room. I'm sorry, I'm in the living room part. The mother is to my right, and she's in the, like, right near where the dining room would be. To my left is Detective Jeff Owens. He's near the door, but to his right is a wall, so he can't see down the hallway. I can only see down the hallway. The mother can see down the hallway based on where she's standing, but I'm standing directly in the hallway. And in front of me, there's a couch. Behind me, there's a television. Um, to the right, to the left, there's a little small furniture, but I'm in open. Jeff Owens can't be seen. So, um, back to talking to the mother. I can't remember the exact words, but it was something in reference to, um, we just had a shooting, um, we have a victim, we're not sure exactly who it is, but would you please, the minute I said, would you please, out the corner, I'm looking at the mother right here. Right here, I'm looking at the mother to my right. I can see out my left eye, you know, the hallway. So I'm talking to the mother, out my left eye coming down that hallway that's straight ahead in front of me is the son that was in that bedroom, the oldest son, tall, like about 6'3", six, 6'4". Six, He's like this, two guns in his hand, like, remember Yosemite Sam, the cartoon character? He's like this coming out the hallway yelling, my brother, my brother, who killed my brother? Man, woo! Now, I'm in the opening. Before I go forward, just imagine what's on my mind. We talking, I gotta look for cover. I gotta get my weapon out. I gotta avoid being shot. There's all types of things that's going on through my mind. All at one time. So, I didn't wanna reach for my weapon right in front of him because I'm thinking my first is, I have to get cover. But there's no cover, all of it is a couch, okay? So first thing I do is I yell, gun. 
I yelled that to left Jeff Owens know what's going on. Because he can see my eyes now in that going down that hallway and you just know your the people you work with. Jeff's a real big strong dude, but still, he's the police, he ain't no sucker. So I yelled gun. As I yelled gun, I can see the corner of my eye that Jeff is pulling his weapon out to prepare himself. And I'm trying to 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 decide, am I going right? Am I going left? Am I going on the floor? There's really nowhere for me to go. I just, I just, I'm just trying to picture, damn, when am I going to get shot? Because there's no way in the world I can get the draw on him. And all he got to do is, boom, I'm gone. But I remember diving on the, I dived on the floor in front of the couch. And as soon as I come up to pull my weapon, because he's getting closer, and Jeff is trying to put himself in a position where he can see better and to sort of try to protect himself, because he has a wall, he has a wall right there that can help him. He's still like this, coming towards me. The mother jumps in front of him as he's coming down like this. I mean, it's like everything just happening in slow motion. Soon as she jumps in front of him, thank God, myself and Jeff, we, we pull, we pull our, 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 our mental note of, of firing them weapons, we pull back because we would have lit him and that mother up, okay? If we would not have been thinking, if we not have been paying attention, we not have been just, just, just focusing on what's going where the barrels of them guns are, we would have lit him and that mother up. But the mother jumps in front of him, which causes him to go back. So now while he's going back, the gun's going back with him, she used her entire weight to push him back into the room. Now this time, like I say, we still have no real cover, okay? No real cover. So Jeff positioned himself behind a wall, whereas now, like I say, the kid still can't see Jeff. I position myself beside Jeff, but sort of not, like not real close to him. I'm sort of like still behind the wall, but I'm, I'm further back, so I can still see some of the hallway as I got my weapon pointed out like I'm, I'm peeping around the corner. The mother's yelling and screaming, please, no, 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 don't shoot my son, don't shoot my son. We like, ma'am, have him come out with his hands up. Still, there's no cover. He can shoot through the walls if he wants to. We can shoot through the walls, but, oh man, God was with us during that situation. The mother came out with the son, both their hands up in the air. I mean, we once I see both the hands up in the air, I position myself, so now I'm moving myself to get in a different angle for what, for what Jeff is, but thank God we're on the same side because we're, we're like this, now we, it's crossfire. We don't want to be in a situation where we got guns pointing towards each other. But we're in a position on the same side, still creating distance for safety precautions, and both the mother and the son come out with their hands up, the son dropped to his knees, he started apologizing. I'm sorry to know you all were the police, I knew you all were the police, I'm sorry for his hands on his head. Oh wow, we handcuffed him with no problem. And the mother's still yelling and screaming and freaking out because we still ain't got to the part about her son being murdered, okay? So, I mean, it's just, it's just chaos. We don't got time to call for no backup, we just handle it. We finally able to calm things down. Once we got the son handcuffed, we sat him down on the floor. The mother's still freaking out. I mean, she's, she's coming to me. She's, I mean, she wanted to be consoled. I got a gun in my hand. I mean, just so much is going on. And I'm like, man, I, I need to talk to you. So I, I put my weapon out and I take her away from the son who's handcuffed with Jeff. I'm explaining to her that we have information that a young man has been shot. We're not sure if it's her other son. I say, you know, can you please um, either go over to the mall, I can get you a ride to go over there just to check to see if it's him. I wasn't sure, but more than likely, I'm quite sure it is probably him. So, you know, she's trying to get herself together. She said, well, what about my son? I said, ma'am, he, he's, he's, he's under arrest. He just had two weapons. So let me speed the story up. I don't want to spend too much time on it. But what happens is um, we call for a unit to come and get the son to take him down to our office. And we end up, you know, having to charge him with carrying a pistol without a license. Find out that one of the weapons do not even work, but one of the weapons do work. And, um, with the mother, of course, she ended up finding out her son was the one who just got murdered. And I'm in the office doing the paperwork for the gun arrest. And while I'm doing the paperwork for the gun arrest, I don't know if you, any of you all ever been involved with a situation where you almost got shot or even you shot someone. Um, while I'm doing the paperwork, my legs, my lower body just start shaking and moving and, 
and and I'm standing there looking like what the hell is going on and it's like uncontrollable um, it's like the whole situation I just came from it's like my body was not going through it opposed to not going through it when it was going on because those situations you don't got time to be nervous you don't got time to be scared you just have to react to a point where you're thinking rationally for your safety your partner's safety the people's safety you just want to be able to just 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 make the right decisions you know it's not always going to happen that way but thank god it worked out that way so as the story goes on um weeks later whenever it was we get a call that the weapons we recovered in that particular case um of course one of them didn't work but the one that did work came back to a murder in prince george's county and what happened was they, the detectives got the information that who was arrested for the gun. They went up, showed a photo array to the witnesses involved in that murder, end up charging this son who came down the hallway with the two guns, charged him with a murder in PG County. So now here it is, you have a mother who youngest son is murdered. Her oldest son is in a room with weapons that she did not know anything about. She stated she did not know he had guns in there. He ended up getting charged for murder in PG County. She lost two sons in one day. You know, one is incarcerated. She, just imagine as a parent, you get notification from a detective, one son is murdered. Then you find out one is being charged with murder from the weapons that he was keeping in your home. Now, I know today, everybody want a lot of social workers doing certain things, but there are certain functions that the police have to do. Now just imagine if a civilian went to that location not being equipped the way we are to handle that situation and i feel as though we handle it very professional um we we you know we were able to come out of that situation where no one was harmed no one was hurt it could have been very ugly more than likely well ain't no more than likely i'm quite sure it would have been justified if one of us would have fired that weapon during that situation i mean you can't give people enough time to point the gun at you to decide when you're going to shoot when i'm sorry when they're going to shoot but Thank God we were able to, to stay composed and handle that situation the way we handled it. And even though it was a Mexican notification, it became very dangerous. You know, in the police department, regardless of what department you work for, there are always going to be situations where you never know what's going to happen. That's why they always train you to be ready. You have to pay attention. And you just have to know that any situation can be your last. And that's real talk.